So last week, the Resident Evil 4 remake was released, and with it came a whole bunch of easter eggs, secrets and hidden details that people may have missed. That's why in today's video we're going to be taking a look at 20 easter eggs, secrets and hidden details in the Resident Evil 4 remake, though admittedly there is definitely more of an emphasis on hidden details and mechanics. Now it should kind of go without saying, but this video will feature spoilers for the RE4 remake so if you want to avoid those, go and finish the game and come back when you're done. Of course, with the remake being such a deep game, I've almost certainly missed something, and if you think I have, then please let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Raycon are premium everyday earbuds at the perfect price point. I mean, they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Now, I actually have two pairs of Raycons. One pair I keep in the house for when I'm cleaning or using the family laptop, and the other pair I leave in the car, just in case I find myself stuck in a waiting room with nothing to do. Now, you may think that being such an affordable pair of earbuds, that Raycon have cut corners when it comes to features. Well, that's just not true. Each pair of Raycons allows you to set three customizable sound profiles, they have very good noise isolation, 8 hours of battery life, and they're even water and sweat resistant, which is perfect for the gym or extra sweaty games of Overwatch. What makes these earbuds such a win-win situation for you is the fact that you can buy Raycons using buy now, pay later, and they also offer an easy and free return guarantee. Though with over 50,000 five-star reviews, I think it's safe to say you'll be very happy with your Raycons. So, are you ready to buy something with a big impact? Click on the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash captain to get 15% off your purchase. Every click helps support myself and the channel a bunch. So once again, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash captain to get 15% off your purchase. Once again, a big thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video and without further delay, let's get started. Right, let's try and present these easter eggs and details in the order that they appear in the campaign. That way, if you want to find things for yourself, it should be a little easier. First up is the excellent village, where Leon has to survive for a certain amount of time before he can continue. Or does he? We'll come back to that. Now, surviving in the village all on your own can be tough, and I'm sure that many of you would have loved some backup to take on the hordes of angry enemies. Well, let me introduce you to this guy. Kill me for the repairs later. So if you set a cow on fire, or in any other way harm a cow, it will go on a rampage mowing down everything in its path. I mean sure, you could just shoot the cow, but you have to admit an angry flaming cow is much cooler. Now when you approach the village, the people seem to be going about their everyday chores. Well, their everyday chores and burning a policeman alive. But there is one Ganado who has some explaining to do. As you weave in and out of the houses in the village, this will happen. So on a first playthrough, the man hiding in the closet can provide quite the scare. Well, have you ever wondered what happens if you never enter this building, thus leaving the man in the closet waiting to surprise you? Well, wonder no more. So the man will stay in the closet until you enter the building, which could be sometime later, or he could stay there forever and never actually make it to bingo. The final detail from the game's opening section is by far the coolest. Yes, even cooler than a flaming cow. As mentioned, the opening battle is on a time limit, which means you need to survive until the church bell rings, at which point the Ganados will stop what they're doing and leave the area. Well, instead of waiting for the bell to ring, you can do this. So you can shoot the bell causing it to ring early, ending the opening battle before it even gets started. Now I did this on a new Game Plus playthrough, but it is possible to hit the bell with Leon's pistol on a fresh run, though it is definitely a lot harder. So one of the toughest early enemies in the RE4 remake is the Brute, 
This bullheaded man can take a lot of damage, but you don't have to waste your precious ammo taking him down. If you lead the hulking man to the nearby bridge, you can do this. So you can make the brute fall to his death, saving you a lot of trouble and more importantly, a lot of ammo in the process. What makes this even better is the brute kindly drops his treasure before falling to his death. I will say that this did take me multiple attempts to get right, so your mileage may vary. Oh, and speaking of bridges, let's head to the valley in chapter two. The valley is a large open area that is full of enemies. Taking them all on on your first playthrough can be tough but there is a way to even the odds. The bridge that runs through the middle of this area is supported by chains, but what's really cool is gunfire and explosions can break these chains, making the bridge unstable. So if you find the odds are stacked against you, lead the Ganados here and take out the bridge like this. Now, I didn't even realize that this was a thing until my third playthrough, but I will say be careful as the dynamite throwing enemies in this area can also destroy the bridge whilst Leon is standing on it. The next easter egg can be found in the village chief's manor. This really big house is seemingly empty, apart from a straining noise coming from the toilet. El So it seems that even Ganados need to take a poo, and judging by the state of this toilet, this guy was definitely mid-poop. So after leaving the manor, you can find a wolf stuck in a bear trap. Feeling the furry little fella's pain, you can help him free, just like you could in the original Resident Evil 4. Now you should never do a good deed just to receive something in return, but saving this wolf can prove to be very useful. When fighting El Gigante in the middle of chapter 3, the wolf will make this badass entrance. Before nibbling at the heels of the newest member of the Leon Kennedy fan club, helping you take El Gigante down once and for all. Now, one of the most well known Easter eggs from the original Resident Evil 4 was this. So shooting the lake enough times would cause a giant creature to spring from the lake and swallow Leon whole. Well, let's see what happens if we try and shoot the lake in the remake. Now, in my opinion, the original cutscene is better. It's more of a jump scare, but let me know what you think down below. Oh, and speaking of much loved Easter eggs from the original game, am I the only one really disappointed that they didn't bring back the cabin Easter egg? You know, the one where you could shoot Luis in the cabin so much that he would lose it and kill Leon? Well, that Easter egg may not be in the remake, but this next Easter egg did make a return. At the beginning of chapter 12, you can backtrack to the throne room and do this. Now, admittedly, Leon does look really cool here, but you know what will make him look even cooler? That's right, sunglasses. Oh, and as mentioned, this same Easter egg can be seen in the original Resident Evil 4. Now, if you play the original game, you may remember the man in the oven who would burst out and surprise Leon. If you inspected the oven afterwards, Leon would ask what we were all thinking. Well, the oven man makes a return in the remake. Unfortunately, you can no longer inspect the oven. Now, over the years, the Resident Evil series has had some seriously cheesy dialogue. And much like us fans of those older games, Capcom never wants to forget. After rescuing Ashley and having her unlock a gate, she will say this. Pretty much a master of unlocking. 
So Ashley calling herself the Master of Unlocking is a reference to this line from the original Resident Evil. Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the Master of Unlocking, take it with you. Thanks. Maybe I'll need it. So the final story related easter egg slash detail can be seen during the jet ski escape scene. If you press the interact button when in the air, this will happen. So despite being in a life or death situation, Leon still has time to pull off some sick tricks. Never change, Leon. Never change. Right, despite Leon's audition for a career in extreme sports being the last story related easter egg, there is still plenty left to cover. First up is one of my favourite additions to the remake. When killing an enemy in a particularly gory way, this will happen. So you can see the Las Plagas virus still writhing inside of its host's body. It's really cool and really, really creepy and also reminds me of the infected from The Last of Us TV show. Thankfully, the next detail is more lighthearted. In the remake, Ashley is a lot more self-sufficient, generally staying out of harm's way. Still, there are moments where she can be annoying. And if you ever feel that way, relieve some of your frustrations by doing this. <coughs> You... what? <clears throat> really? So you can throw eggs at Ashley as a bit of payback. Oh, and you can also egg the merchant, though it's nowhere near as fun. <coughs> now, if the idea of egging Ashley seems a bit harsh, you could just have Leon shine his torch in her face, which will cause her to shield her eyes. Now, as we witnessed earlier, the bear traps in Resident Evil 4 can be a real pain in the ass, though not just for you. If you lead an enemy into a bear trap, you can do this. <laughs> So not only does the bear trap incapacitate the ganado, but you can melee the trapped enemy, which will of course separate its leg from its body. It's a really cool detail. Now, by the end of the game, Leon's arsenal is pretty stacked, with our boy ready to take on an entire country on his own. But did you know that the combat knife that Leon starts the game with is the same knife given to him by Marvin at the beginning of Resident Evil 2? How do I know that? Well, if you examine the knife, it says that Leon received it during his time at the Raccoon City Police Department. And we know that it was Marvin who gave Leon the knife. You'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Him. Also, Leon's starting pistol is a custom-made handgun with Kendo engraved on the side. This is a reference to Joseph Kendo, the brother of Resident Evil 2 gun shop owner, Robert Kendo. Speaking of guns, did you know that Leon has two different aiming animations? Now, 99% of the time, Leon will aim like this. But if an enemy gets too close, he will aim like this instead. So this is the center axis relock stance, an actual way to shoot things at close quarters, though you probably recognize it from the John Wick movies. Now, despite the stakes being pretty high, Leon can take time out of shooting things to shoot wooden things. The gun range can be very addictive, though it does come with its own distractions. If you try the firing range with Ashley in tow, she'll be sitting like this, which is a reference to this piece of promotional art from the original Resident Evil 4. Finally, and perhaps the most unremarkable detail in this entire video, but this is how the title screen looks before completing the game. And here is what it looks like after completing the game. Now, I don't know if that's a reference to anything, but I'm sure if it is, one of you will tell me. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like is really appreciated. If you are a fan of Easter eggs and secrets in games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you all for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.